Weight loss versus health. This is a big video, and it's long overdue. Hands up, how many people think that having a higher level of body fat is unhealthy? Now, if everyone in the world answered that question, what percentage of people do you think would raise their hands? Chances are, quite a lot. I mean, think about it. When a plus size model appears in mainstream media, there is an inevitable backlash of people who will automatically judge their health based on how they look. You need to lose weight. You are not healthy. That type of thing. Then some people will retort and say that you can't judge someone's health based on how much they weigh. And you kind of end up with two groups of people and an absolute shit apocalypse of arguments. So if this is improving health and this is lowering body weight, how much do they actually overlap? So I'm going to use two opposing viewpoints to try and clear up some confusion. You cannot say that there is no link between higher body weights and health risk. There is. There is evidence showing that having a higher body weight can elevate risk of certain conditions. A review of 72 different studies showing that central adiposity was associated with higher mortality risk. A review of reviews showing that obesity was associated with lower health-related quality of life. So you can understand why people would think that higher body weights are bad, and that's the end of discussion. Yes, but on an individual level, you cannot assess someone's health based on weight alone. But this sounds different, yet, it is also correct. I mean, does anyone think that health and weight are perfectly intertwined always? I mean, really think about that. Chances are we all know one thin person who smokes a lot, drinks a lot, and doesn't exercise. But if weight was a great indicator of health in isolation, we would have to assume that that thin person is healthy. But we don't do that. So this is an example of the divergence. Whilst health and weight do have a relationship, they aren't actually best friends that hold hands everywhere they go. For example, if we go back to that review paper that looked at obesity and health-related quality of life scores, what else do we see? It noted that more research was needed to look at confounding variables like comorbidities and fitness levels, i.e. If someone has obesity, and that is a risk factor in itself, if they improve their fitness levels, how does that alter their risk profile? For example, one study showed that healthy behaviours like exercising regularly, only drinking alcohol moderately, not smoking, and eating five or more servings of fruits and vegetables per day was associated with lower mortality risk, and this was irrespective of BMI. A meta-analysis found that unfit individuals had twice the mortality risk, and this was irrespective of BMI. Now, just to reiterate, this isn't saying that body weight has no relevance on health at all, it's just saying that other factors are at play. But if you lose weight, you can improve health. And this is correct as well. There is evidence to show that weight loss can improve health markers even with modest weight loss like 5%. And probably additional benefits above and beyond that 5%, possibly condition specific. However, research shows that long-term weight loss maintenance success rates are notoriously low, so is it right for us to encourage everyone to diet? And this, my friends, is the big fucking obstacle that we can't ignore. Let's pretend for a moment that everyone agrees that weight loss is universally healthy for everyone who has a higher body weight. Should we all promote it indiscriminately if we know that only a relatively small percentage of people are going to be able to maintain that lower body weight? Here's a review paper showing that high initial weight loss decreases over time. And another review paper showing the same thing. In some instances, people regaining all the weight they lost plus a little bit extra. Just to clarify, this is not saying that long-term weight loss maintenance is impossible. Lots of people do lose a significant amount of weight and manage to keep it off. But if we blanket prescribe weight loss to a huge group of people, we have to understand that not everyone is going to achieve that successfully. One study asked people to define four different weight loss goals prior to a 48-week diet. 47% of those people did not even manage to achieve their disappointing weight loss goal, let alone their acceptable, happy or dream weight loss goals. Should we be surprised that people are desperate and turning to things like celery juice diet plans or dodgy fat burners or overly restrictive unsustainable diet plans? If you prescribe weight loss as the end goal to a large group of people, you can't guarantee that end point, but they can strive to implement healthy behaviours. I am certainly not anti-intentional weight loss far from it. But I think there are some very real conversations to be had about blanket prescribing weight loss without acknowledging that some methods are going to be healthier than others. Health and body weight are not perfectly intertwined all the time, and some people might find it extremely difficult to lose a significant amount of weight and keep it off. And I'm certainly not trying to dictate what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just trying to educate so you can make the best choices for yourself.